What are the most underutilized soft skills? And how do you, as a customer service leader, how do you coach on those skills? That's coming up in this video. Recently, I got to sit down with one of my clients and go through research they had done on what are the top five most underutilized soft skills for customer support. Um, they had me at five most underutilized. I'm a data person and I am always looking for not just the what, but the why. And that's why I love this research. We got to talk about what the most underutilized skills are, what the top skills needed are, and even why are employees not using the skills or why are they underutilizing the skills. After discussing the research and me reading the research, I hosted a webinar for my client, Balto, and we had several hundred people sign up. We had a wonderful 45 minutes of me relaying or interpreting the research. And then I offered three strategies, three high level coaching strategies to help customer service leaders get those underutilized skills out of exile and get them to a place of this is what we talk about. This is our culture. This is what we do. We laughed, we learned, we shared ideas. And I love that experience so much that I thought I'm going to come to you with the top three strategies that I taught in that webinar. Most of my work, as you well know, if you are one of my regular customers or subscribers here on YouTube, you know my work is directly with the front line and I'll never replace that. You all are my audience. I'm speaking now to the front line agents, customer support professionals, representatives. You are my audience and I love supporting you. Today, I'm going to support my frontline audience by supporting the people that you report to and showing you how to coach, get the best out of your people. I'm glad we're here. So let's get into it. The five most underutilized soft skills and how you can coach to develop those skills in your team. Let's start by asking, why does emotional intelligence matter? Why are soft skills so important? The people on your team who have strong emotional intelligence are able to deliver bad news with confidence. They don't hesitate. They don't have a lot of fear around denying a request or giving bad news. They're able to control calls more easily and they're more able, better positioned to preempt an escalation. Of course, we have to train people on our processes, on our policies, but if we want them to be able to deliver bad news and deliver a great customer experience, especially in the challenging interactions, saying no, denying a request, we have to help them develop their emotional intelligence. And so let's now, now that we know that emotional intel intelligence is important, let's now look at five of the most underutilized soft skills. And this is based on my client Balto, Balto AI, analyzing over 170 million phone calls in several industries from financial services to healthcare to collections, B2B and more. So here are five of the most underutilized soft skills. According to their research, a sense of urgency, the ability to convey that sense of urgency, a sense of agreeability, and when I talked about agreeability live in a live webinar, someone asked a question. Can you give me an example of what you mean by agreeability? Agreeability is your ability, your, your employee's ability, or you, if you are this, uh, the frontline support professional, your ability to agree with positive words like definitely, I see, absolutely, sure thing, you bet, 
whatever is natural for you. If we can find points to agree and validate the customer, things are going to go so much more smoothly. Empathy. We need to be able to take on the perspective of the customer. We don't have to agree with them literally, but I need to be able to put myself in your shoes and sense how you see things, active listening. And then finally, the ability to recap. If you are struggling with call control, your AHT, average handle time is far higher than you'd like, chances are the comprehensive recap is an issue, meaning your employees at the end of the call are not offering the customer everything they need. They're not summarizing and giving a recap that guides your customers to the next step. So these are five of the most underutilized skills. Now I am a data person. I like to know where research comes from. Uh, so here, here is uh, where I got this Balto. My client has something called the real time index and I'll put a link down below if you want to go you'll just go to their real-time index page you will do a search for your industry or an industry that closely relates to their industry and and then just click on that and then you can look at data that will help you understand here's a list of some of the industries that they have and you can look at data per industry that will tell you the the most important skills that customer professionals need and the ones that are most underutilized. And again, this is based on their data of over 170 million phone calls. Um, you might just like to, to play around with the index. So now I've given you a list of five of the most underutilized skills. You probably already know on your end what the, the most underutilized skills are. The question is, the, the challenge is, how then do I, I coach the behaviors? How do I use what I know that we're not doing, that knowledge of what we're not doing, and then coach? Well, that's what this video is all about. I'm gonna break down um, what you need to do, starting with why don't employees perform? Like we, we hire them to do a job. We train them, we think adequately. We give them feedback. Why then, when it comes to our call monitoring, our, our QA, why are they still not doing, despite every effort on our part, why are they not doing what we want them to do? There could be several reasons for this. Now here is research from uh, Balto that breaks down why employees are not doing what you believe that they should do. Um, forgetfulness is number one here at 24%. I can certainly relate to that. I mean, there's only so much that, that we have capacity for. And so if you have a lot of questions, a lot of steps, you know, interactions, you know, it's a tree, they have to do this, then this. And if that's not the case, we do this. It's a lot. And how do they do it? So forgetfulness, nervousness comes in at 21%. And that's not just for new hires. Maybe we get nervous because um, a, a customer is difficult, difficult. They're over talking us or gosh, this is something that I haven't had to encounter before. Lack of training is the smallest piece of the pie at 12% unsuccessful approach. Maybe I do know what to do, but I don't really know how to execute it. So unsuccessful approach is 22% boredom. Now that is one that surprised me. And I think uh, it probably is a close cousin to, um, burnout. But yeah, I'm bored. And so maybe I'm apathetic. I just really don't care. So this is helpful to know. So now I've given you five of the most underutilized skills. And now you know the top reasons why your agents are not delivering what you need them to do. I'm going to break down for you in this video, three ways that you can coach the most underutilized skills in your business. Technique number one is an easy two-step framework for coaching soft skills. And this framework is designed for situations where it's not, I'm not ready to terminate someone. Things are not so out of control that we need to have, uh, you know, a five-step progressive discipline plan. It is something that I want to bring to your attention because I want to see you improve only two steps. And in fact, every one of my frameworks that I'm going to share with you today 
super, super simple. So this two-step framework, I want you to use in a way that's very conversational. I want it to feel easy for you and for your employees. The two steps are, number one, I want you to say, what I appreciate about blank is, and then I want you to say, one thing I want you to work on is, it is that simple. That is all you have to do. Now let's break down what that might look like. What I appreciate about how you handle this customer is that you redirected the, redirected the aggression and guided the customer to the next steps. So that's step one. Step two might look like, one thing I'd like you to work on is conveying a sense of empathy. The customer escalated and you had to redirect the intensity because you didn't link the communication chain and show empathy as Myra taught us in training last month. Can you think of something you could have said to show empathy? Now look at that, two very simple steps. Again, this is not high level like it's progressive discipline. It's I've noticed something and I wanna bring it to your attention. I intentionally start with what I like about. I always, when, when, I always focus on when you're dealing with performance or behavior issues, on maintaining the employee's esteem. I don't want your employees to feel nervous when you sit down to talk to them. I don't want their heart rate up. I don't want them to have dread or fear. And one way to help minimize the possibility of that is for you to start with a positive and that positive needs to be genuine. So start out with this framework, what I like about blank and make that genuine. All right, technique number two is consistency. I could have made this one word, consistency. I want you to consistently coach on whatever the variance is, what you're not seeing, you're going to have to be consistent so that your employees are going to take you seriously. Now to illustrate this technique, I wanna tell you my journey, how I went from sitting on the couch, I don't wanna literally call myself a couch potato, but I went from the couch to running a half marathon in my 40s. I was never an athlete, no sport at all. I did a little track, not for the team in my, my high school, but just as part of gym, but that is it. And in my 40s, I decided that I wanted to be a runner. And so a friend told me about an app called Couch to 5K. And so I downloaded the app and absolutely loved it. Now, here's what I loved about it. The app, well, first of all, the program was nine weeks. So I didn't start with training for a half marathon. I started, I took a baby step. I want to run 3.1 miles. The program is nine weeks. And every week for nine weeks, you run three times. And the app, um, you, you, you pull it up when you go for a run. I, I would put my AirPods in or earphones, whatever I was uh, rocking at that time. And the app, it walks you through step by step what to do. So for week one, day one, the app will explain to you before you get started, today we are going to be active for 30 minutes. And you are going to start with a five minute walk. I will give you prompts, this is the app talking to me, to let you know when to start your run. You're going to run today for 60 seconds. I remember loving that. A person who never run before, I could do that. I could run for one minute. And so you'd walk for the five minutes and then when it got closer to the first run, it would say, okay, in 60 seconds, you're going to start your first run. Okay, 45 seconds, 30 seconds, 10 seconds. And then it would prompt you while you're running, good job, 30 seconds to go. All right, just 10 more seconds. And the first week you run one minute, eight different times. And then you come back for week two, week three, and you keep building. So you go from one minute to 90 seconds, all the way up to not, week nine, you are running nonstop for uh, 30 minutes, 3.1 miles approximately. This program worked for me. It took me from the couch, a person who'd never run, to in her mid 40s running for 30 minutes straight. It worked because it was consistent you know, you showed up every week, you showed up three days a week, you chose the same three days a week. And in addition to that, I got support in my ear. You're doing a great job. 30 seconds to go, one more run to go. 
That approach worked for me and it built my esteem and it, it got me to the point of running and I completed that, uh, ran three, I believe three, two or three, five Ks in my city and then prepared for my half marathon, which I, I did uh, before I turned 50. That is what consistency with feedback and, and nudges, positive nudges will do. And if it can take me from the couch to running, what can that kind of consistency and, and the nudging and the positive reinforcement do for your team? The model I like to think of as being based on the SMART goal setting framework. And maybe you've heard of, of this SMART goals. This is an acronym for setting a goal that is specific. It is measurable. It is attainable. It's relevant and it is time bounded. I, I really like this. This is a way to change behavior. So the couch to 5k, you had, you, you were consistent. You had, it was time bounded in that in nine weeks, you'll get here time bounded in that every week for three weeks, you'll do this time bounded in for the first week. Very realistic. You're only running for one minute. And that really worked when you coach. I want you to think of the couch to 5k. Or if you're familiar with smart goals, think of that. My daughter is 22 and she is, um, she just graduated from college a few months ago. At the time of this video, she graduated uh, two months ago. And uh, a big concern for me is supporting her in her young adult life. I, I knew um, that I would, I'm not, I was not going to cut her off financially, right? I mean, she's uh, got her degree. She got two bachelor's degrees, but she does not have her big girl job as, as she likes to call it. And I wanted her to feel supported, but I wanted her to also, I wanted to feel a sense of pushing her out of the nest. So I came up with a four step plan. I called it phase one, two, three, and four of how we would support her. Phase one, for example, is for the first six months after graduation, uh, your father and I will support you 100% as we did when you were a college student, meaning we're going to pay your rent, your utilities, your, your food, your gasoline, everything. And then that's phase one. Phase two starts um, with month seven. And we gave her four bills that she's going to be responsible for. Um, her um, utilities, uh, groceries, I think, uh, gasoline, and one uh, internet. Um, and then we, then phase three, we continue to add and everything has a date. That is how you are consistent. You don't want to overwhelm your employees. No more than I wanted to overwhelm my daughter. No more than the app that taught me couch to 5k. I took me from couch to 5k, wanted to overwhelm me. If people feel overwhelmed, um, if, if it's not realistic, if it doesn't have dates, you've got to have all of that. And that, so that's consistency. I could have, um, and probably should have called this more than consistency. It's positive reinforcement. It is being realistic. It literally is everything that the smart goals is talking about specific, measurable, attainable and couch of 5k made it attainable by having me only run one minute for the first week. I made my daughter's financial independence attainable by only having her uh, or not having her pay any bills for the first a few months. So I want you to think about guiding your employees in this manner. It will be so productive and effective and it's going to maintain their esteem and make things easier for you. All right. My final technique for you is to coach through questions. The best boss I ever had, and I've been out of the workforce for over 20 years out of working for, for other people. And yet I remember this boss, Allison Moore was her name. She always gave, and I don't even like to use the word gave orders. She always guided me. That's the word I'll use with questions. So she might uh, take a document that I've written and said, and might say, well, Myra, what would you think if we did X or how would you feel if we did Y? She always approached me with a question and she, she was my boss. She had every right to make directives, but she always chose to coach and guide through questions. And in that way, I wanted to perform. I wanted to show up. I wanted to be excellent for her. And so I've always remembered that. And so I like for you to coach through questions. And so here's how 
you might do that. I've come up with a four step, super simple formula for, for how to, to nudge behavior, how to change behavior, how to coach people by asking questions. Four steps. Step number one is you ask a question. Step number two is I want you to merely listen to the answer. This is when we're coaching our employees. Step three is, this is super simple, repeat steps one and two. And then number four is I want you to offer support as needed. Now, I, I have a guide that um, it's really, it's, it's my nine steps to coaching customer service professionals. In that guide, one of the steps is coach. And I suggest coach through questions, the model I just gave you. So I'm going to pull up that guide now and we're going to look at how my four steps might look if we are coaching someone through questions. So I've got, um, this is step five of my nine step model seen here on the left and on the right is how it might look. So let's say I'm sitting down with my employee to coach. I have, this is a contact center and I have played a phone call that we both listened to and I've stopped the call and I'm going to coach that call using the four steps here on the left. So the first thing you're going to do is ask a question. Step one, how do you feel about that call? Okay. So just a question. I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to suggest with my tone or my facial expression that it was an amazing call or that I'm disappointed. I'm merely going to say, how did you feel about that call? A question. And then we're going to give the employee an opportunity to respond. And let's say in this situation, the employee said, ah, it was okay, I guess. And then as a coach, um, so you're listening to the answer. Um, it's okay, I guess. And then you're going to repeat steps one and two, ask another question, and then you'll listen. So let's say you say, well, why was it okay rather than terrible or terrific? This is how I would talk to my kids, you know, after school, how was your day? It was fine. Well, what made it fine? I mean, why wasn't it fantastic? Why, why wasn't it horrible? Literally, that, that's how I would talk. And that gets people, the point of that is to get them to be more specific. And so let's say your employee answers that with, I answered her question, but I wouldn't say that the customer was thrilled that she called today. And then you can respond to that. Could you have done anything to achieve a thrilled I response? thrilled I called response from her. So this is really you beginning to coach. So you're directing them through a question. You're not telling them what you found as a gap or disappointing in the call. You are merely asking a question. So let's say your employee says to that, uh, listening to the call, I tend to interrupt and over talk customers. I could have yielded to the caller, allowing her to finish her statements as we learned in Myra's training. Not over talking the customer would have made for a friendly service experience. All right. So that is my, my, my um, question, coaching through questioning framework. Super simple. Employees tend to respond very well to this. People don't like to be told what to do. You probably don't like to be told to, what to do. So if you coach through questioning, you can get the same results without having to sound like that, that boss, the boss that you are, the boss that you have every right to walk into that space, but yet you're easier for your, for your employees to take. If you're interested in that full guide, I'll put a link down below so that you can grab that and then you can have the four questions and the entire nine step framework. Now, when you choose to adopt and apply the frameworks that I have shared with you, and there were three here today, when you choose to adopt and apply those frameworks, great things begin to happen. Knowing the top five under, underutilized skills is going to position you to prepare proactively for your team's development. You've got to know where there is a gap, where there is a variance. So again, I'm going to have a link in the description box so you can look at the five underutilized skills for your industry specifically. Understanding why your employees don't apply the crucial skills, that helps you precisely aim your coaching. So you know that maybe they're, they're forgetting, they're nervous, they're bored, um, they, their approach is unsuccessful. When you listen to your own calls, your own calls, you'll have a better idea. My easy two-step framework, here's what I like about, 
and here's what I'd like you to work on. That's what I'm referring to here. That is going to help you be straightforward and confident and have just a, a quick, easy framework that you can have and, and use in a one-to-one. -one. It can be uh, a performance uh, review meeting. It can be just in conversation as you pass by. You get to use that in any way that you want to use that. When you guide your employees using prompts, and nudges and you are consistent, kind of like my couch to 5K took me from the couch to eventually running a half marathon because it was consistent, because it was specific, because it was attainable and relevant to my personal goals, it helped me. When you make your coaching like couch to 5K was for me or a smart goal, you are going to take your employees where you need them to go and they're going to willingly participate in that journey. And then finally, my, my nine step coaching model, if you choose to grab the guide that I referred to, that's where I had the coach through questioning. If you use that entire framework or even just the four questions that I have provided here, you are going to have a simplified model for how to coach on soft skills. Thank you for sitting down with me to discuss research that I found absolutely fascinating. If you find that you need more help on how to coach the most important soft skills for your customer support team, I invite you to check out the links in the description below or visit me at myragolden.com. I have a wonderful, fantastic management training course that I call Managing to Eliminate Unacceptable performance. And that might be a good fit for you if you have any uh, hesitancy on addressing performance issues. So check out that course at myragolden.com. And again, the links below. All right. I'll see you next time.